Compared to you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if you're excited that you have a father who loves you beyond words, give Jesus a big shout. Come on now. Give Jesus a big shout. Amen. You may be seated in God's presence. Hallelujah. Welcome to Grace Hill Christian Center, Zoe Arena TV. My name is Joy Akin Waleria, and I'll be taking you through a few church rules that you should notice. One, do not sleep or accommodate any distractions during the course of the service, as this could be detrimental to your spiritual health. Two, always participate during the service and say a big amen when pastor makes declarations or says prayers over your life. Three, kindly turn off all mobile devices when service is going on, or put them on flight mode. Better still, just put off all your mobile devices so you are not a big distraction during service. Four, when and if the need arises, kindly ask any of the ushers or service team members on the directions to the restroom. Five, 
please do well to invite someone to church next week because we are sure that you'll be blessed today. Sit tight with expectations in your heart and enjoy a wonderful service. God bless you and welcome to our year of great light. Back to you in the studio. Father, we thank you for Grace with Christian Center. Zoe Arena. We are committed to the Great Commission, winning the lost, and making disciples of all nations. We are a mega church, and we call souls. From every part of this city, city. north, south, south, east, east, and west. west. Every service is filled filled and overflowing. overflowing. Zorana is a city set on a hill hill that cannot be hidden. hidden. We attract quality quality and quantity. We We are a force to be reckoned with. We We own our lands and our own properties with ease. Our needs are met, bills are paid, and we have access for every good work. We enjoy fresh word consistently, accompanied by signs and wonders, diverse miracles, and the manifestations of the Spirit is common in our midst. We walk in love towards each other in Jesus' name. Here, souls are won, mind renewed, convictions are built and strengthened, bodies are healed, doors are opened, lives become productive. We are a congregation of the mighty and the assembly of the rich. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, you may be seated in God's presence. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you are excited to be here tonight? Let your excitement show it tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. The psalmist says, I was glad when they say unto me, let us go into the house of God. How many of you are glad? And you're not sad. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to God. How many of you remember this or year of great light? God has not changed his mind. In spite of the rise of dollar, God has not changed his mind. The glory to God is still our year of great light. How many of you used to believe that with me? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to God. All right, so quickly, I just want to quickly introduce my father, your father in the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I just want to quickly go straight into it so that he can have ample time to be a blessing to us. How many of you were here last week? Wednesday, last week Tuesday, amen, was a massive blessing. Those of you who are not here, please, I'd like to beg, you, beg of you, go back online and read and watch the message. It will be a total blessing to you, amen. And when you watch it, also send your offering, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. Um, tonight, I just want to, let me begin by appreciating our daddy, the daddies and our, and our mothers in the house. Amen. Please help me celebrate the elders in the house. We have elders, we have the kings in the house. I can't, I can't call them, but please help me celebrate them. We don't celebrate elders like this. Amen. Celebrate them properly. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us. Tuesday in, Tuesday out for being a blessing. Amen. Amen. We also have Pastor Sarah from the Epignosis Christian Center. Please help me celebrate her. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Hallelujah. Next to him, we have Pastor Steve in the house. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I'm just following the train. Glory to God. Next to him, we have our delectable one and only Mama Sharon. Please help me celebrate her. Come on. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 
I think I so I so I so believe that somehow I think God is doing us good because you are here with us, Amen. Sometimes He looks at your complexion and says, "If I deal with this food based on that complexion, they will not be able to take it." <laughs> so thank you for being here. Thank you for being a blessing. On a Sunday, you are a blessing. Thank you so much for being a blessing. Thank you so so much, bro. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, you may be seated for just a minute, and then I'll bring my papa up. Amen. Hallelujah. In 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse 9, I'll just read a verse. I'm not preaching, you know. <laughs> just read a verse. I just want to condition your heart because I prayed and I'm believing God that this will be a massive blessing tonight. Amen. Amen. Give me the Amplified Classic so that I don't, I don't waste time. Amplified Classic. The Bible says, and she said to her husband, behold now, I perceive that this is a holy man of God. Who passes by? How often? Continually. Continually. You see, there is every tendency that when you meet a man of God, often, there's every tendency that you may lose the right perception. Are you with me? This scripture was the beginning of a total transformation of a woman's life. It started by perceiving that this man that is passing is not a mechanic. That this man that is passing by is not a comedian. <laughs> this man that is passing by is a holy man of God. This perception turned barrenness around. This perception made sure that she was preserved in time of famine. This perception made sure that even seven years afterwards she came back to a restoration. I want to call your attention to something tonight. I want you to perceive our papa as one who is sent from God to you. You might have met him severally, continually, but today I want you to perceive him differently. Perception is very powerful. You also notice that in the same John chapter 4, and verse, verse 19, the woman at the, at, the, at the well, she was bantering with Jesus. She got to a point where she said, I perceive that you are a prophet. And that was the, the, that was changed the conversation and changed her life forever. Glory to God. If, if we bring him up tonight and then you see him as somebody who will make you happy, it's okay. If you bring him up tonight and you say, ah, this man is a veteran preacher of God's word and you, you will have something to write, it's all right. But if I want, you to, I want you to perceive him tonight as one who is sent of God to you. And receive these words with gladness of heart. Because this is the word Bible says we should, we should receive the, 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 with meekness the engrafted word of God. Which is able to save our souls. Glory to God. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. The man of God I'm about to bring up is no stranger to most of you. But to some of you, this might be your first time or maybe your second time. But he's our father in the Lord, is the, is the CEO of Epignosis, of Epignosis Christian Center and the founder of Grace Week Christian Center. My father, our father, this anointing needs no introduction. Please help you welcome Papa T. Hallelujah. Whew, hallelujah. Good evening, everyone. Trust you had a great day, right? May the Lord bless and keep you. And cause his face to shine upon you. May you have good things to tell Amen. and good testimony in your lives Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I trust God that tonight God will push us to the next level Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I want to salute Pastor Enoch Angie. <laughs> celebrate him, celebrate him, celebrate him. <laughs> to, to, to be a pioneer pastor is a lot of work. Um, he's doing a great job. But apart from the great job, he's a lovely guy. Very, very lovely guy. Good nature. Very, very good. Lovely guy. Extremely lovely guy. Uh, I, I've, I've, in my sojourn in life, I'm meeting a lot of people. I've discovered that anointing and, and calling doesn't change your character. It doesn't change who you are. I've met a lot of people who are anointed, who are good, are very nasty, arrogant, proud. You know, but he is none of that. Very, very good man. Very good man. And, uh, you know, God, God bless you. And uh, ably assisted by another guy that we have, um, Pastor Sonny. God bless you. God bless you. I've always known that Sonny carries uh, grace of God. But I deliberately kept him in the car park. He was in the car park for a long time. I just said, be in car park. And he was parking the cars. 
was working with the was assistant H O T L car park. He was there for years. From everywhere, we were just looking at him. So when we got when he's there, as I was praying, God said, "It's time." And I just said, "Okay, fine." Oh yeah, go ahead. And you can see that it just fitted into it perfectly, perfectly, perfectly. Oh, well, we celebrate you, man of God. We celebrate you. Honestly, we really celebrate you. God bless you. I want to thank all our pastors who are here tonight. Pastor Steve, God bless you. Pastor Sarah, God bless you. All our elders, thank you for coming. Jaspiro, it's nice seeing you. And the chairman, you are looking, whether he's there, he's there. When I say Jaspiro, he's there. He's looking very well dressed. He's tra- although his trousers didn't reach grand, but he's, uh, he's well dressed. Pra- praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, Dr. Iseko, it's nice seeing you. God bless you. That's the president of our Deacon and Deaconess Board. Doing a great job. God bless every one of you. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we give you praise. We receive tonight with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save our souls. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for the light shining in our hearts, in our lives. We receive the supply of your spirit in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the anointing and the grace that makes teaching and preaching easy. And the grace that makes comprehension also easy. And the power to do. We give you praise, Lord. As we gather together, like as a brother and sister, we also thank for our nation, Nigeria. Because you are breathing life into this, our Lazarus. In the name of Jesus. Thank for spirit of resurrection. Working in Nigeria. Let your name alone be glorified. Blessed be your name, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. One more time, let's celebrate the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, greet your neighbor warmly as you take your seat. Tell them you're happy to see them. Hallelujah. Okay, as we unpack the uh, Udwak is nice. You are, incidentally, I asked of I asked of her today. I said, "Where is Udwak? She said, Udwak travel. You know, God, I didn't see you last Tuesday. You will come back." You know, um, as we unpack the the topic uh, wisdom for such a time as this, I said our perception or our no, no perception, our approach will be that of covenant mentality. Psalm seventy four. Let's start. Psalm 74. Last week, we looked at the covenant of fatherhood, right? And I believe you have been going over it. Some of you, if you have not watched, go and watch it again. I watched it again. I watched it myself. I joined my wife again to watch it. We watched it about twice. Look at what it says here. It says, have respect, what? Let's read from verse 19. Oh, do not deliver the life of your turtle dove. Of thirty of your thirty dove to the wild beast. Do not forget the life of the poor of your poor forever. Look at they say, have respect to the covenant, for the dark places of the earth are full of haunts of what of cruelty, habitation of wickedness. But the way to circumvent and defeat this habitation of wickedness is for you to have regard for the covenant, because wickedness. And, weak and darkness that covers the earth cannot undo the covenant. So it's better for us to understand the covenant that God has made available to us. Glory be to God forevermore. Not just to know it, but to have what in respect for it. Hallelujah. So last week we dealt with the covenant of fatherhood and we approached it from the perspective of the uh, prodigal son. Remember Luke chapter 15? And we'll talk about the heart of the Father and the acts of the Father. Glory be to God forevermore. I will encourage you, go and watch that message so you can see because of your connection with God. Bible says we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Remember? Romans chapter 8 verse 15. But we have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry what? Abba Father. 
Glory be to God forevermore. The Bible says in the book of um, Psalm 2 verse 7, God declared it to Jesus Christ by prophecy in, in, in uh, the day was resurrected. He said, you, he says, you are my beloved son. He said, you are my son. He said, to this day, have I what? Begotten you. And the book of Hebrew, quoting the same thing, the book of Hebrew chapter 1 verse 5, he said, God said to Jesus Christ, this day have I begotten you. And you would think he was the only begotten. He said, no, that's not the truth. But by the time you study further, you go further in the book of John, chapter 20. He said, I go to your father and my father. Your God and my God. And 4 John chapter 3, verses 1 and 2 says, Behold, what manner of Lord the Father has given unto us, that we should be called what? The sons of God. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 1 from verse 11, it says he came to his own, his own received him not. But as many as received him, they go what? Power to be called what? The sons of God. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I am a son of God. And if I'm a son of God, God is my father. Simple arithmetic, have you? <laughs> Hallelujah. But today, I want to take your attention to another covenant. And it's good for you to have that mentality of God as your father. And live in it. And talk to him so. Glory be to God forevermore. That will boost your confidence. That will help you in life. Hallelujah. Let's, may God give you that revelation. May God just really give you that revelation. That is my father. Wow. Glory be to God forevermore. Today, I want to call, take your attention to another thing. Go to Psalm 50. Tonight, Last week is what we know and we're walking. This week is what we do. I want to call your attention to something that you, we, we all know it, but we don't do it. Psalm 50. Hey, hey, thank you, Holy Spirit. Psalm 50. But I've, I've not mentioned the verse. Ah, the, I, 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 I've mentioned the verse inside here, so you must know it. You must perceive it. Okay, chapter, chapter 5, verse 5. Hey, I love this. Gather what my says together to me. Those who have made what a covenant with me by what? By sacrifice. Write it down. The title of today. Covenant by sacrifice. Living a life of covenant by sacrifice. He says, gather my says to me. Gather them to me. Hallelujah. Those who have made what? A covenant with me. By what? By sacrifice. There is a covenant that we have with, with God through the sacrifice of Jesus. There is another one that you make. He's talking about this one that you make. Who have made. There is one that Christ has made on our behalf. There is another one that you yourself must make. Glory be to God forevermore. I'm not raising an offering. Don't be tensed. I break the spirit of poverty over your life. If you don't want to be stranded, you better hear what I'm talking about. He said, gather my saints to me. Gather my, they are my saints. Gather them unto me. Those who have made covenant with me by what? By sacrifice. Everybody can be singing in the same choir. The same, same prayer meeting. All of a sudden, somebody will just shoot up among them. You would think that God favors one more than the other. God didn't favor anybody more than the other. What sacrifice are they making? Nigeria cannot limit you. Your background cannot stop you. It depends on how you understand your covenant and how much sacrifice you are, able, you are ready to make. It depends on that. And until you embrace this what I'm talking about tonight, you may be growing at a very slow pace. You fact, you'll be growing naturally. You know what I mean? Naturally, when it's time for you to buy a car after 30 years, you'll buy one. When you are 60, you buy land. When you retire, they give you wristwatch. <laughs> you will just grow naturally. But there are principles in the word of God to break natural trend of things. 
Glory be to God forevermore. Because this is something, I don't think I've ever really talked about this since we started Grace Be Sacrifice. We mentioned giving here and there. No! It's more than giving. We need to talk about sacrifice. You know, every man of God is a good man. Every man of God is a very great man. But the moment he begins to talk about giving, he's a bad man. That man, I like him. If for that church, they know they put pressure on people about giving. Now, correct man. You could just teach them word of God and see how you go to open. You know, they, you know, they don't have money hungry like other, all these men of God. They don't have money hungry. He's making the people poor. That's why you like him. Because, see, when you see people of the world praising you, that means you and the devil are in the same court. That's what Jesus Christ said. He said, woe unto when men speak well of you. He said, that's how they speak well of false prophets. So as long as you don't go into money and talk about that, everybody's comfortable with you. Even as I'm talking about money right now, if you see the word, if I can perceive your spirit, everybody's at air on the edge. Is the power that is the demon that wants to keep you poor that is making you feel like that? Hallelujah. He said, gather my sins to me. My sins. For the fact that they are saying that means they've already had the covenant because of Christ. He said, but this one, so this, they are saying so, covenant of Christ stands on their behalf. But they have gone beyond that now. They have made their, their own sacrifice. Glory be to God forevermore. Hallelujah. If you want to rise in the kingdom of God, you cannot avoid sacrifice. You can't. You cannot. Anything that doesn't demand anything from you, anything from you cannot give you anything. Any school you go to that they don't demand anything from you, you just go with like come, they will not give you anything too. Glory be to God forevermore. The secret to real breakthroughs in the kingdom of God is sacrifice. That's the real secret to breakthrough. And how we hurry up to now? I have limited time. Please write this down. When it comes to operating in the kingdom, there are two kinds of graces. You don't, you see, some of, some, some of us don't understand that. We just, you know, we just won't talk about grace, grace. No, there's a general grace. Hmm? There's a general grace and they are what I call unusual or special graces. There are two of them. They are different. General grace, number one. Then there's what I call specialized grace or what I call unusual grace. What do I pastor what do I general grace? General grace is the word what the Bible talks about in the book of Titus chapter, chapter 2 verse 11. You know what? Check it, check it. Who is there? Who's on the console? Be fast, be fast. Bible says, for the grace of God that brings what salvation has appeared to what? Amen. That's a general grace. If anybody today, I don't care the kind of sinner you are, if you say, I give my life to Christ, you'll be saved. It's a general grace that's appeared to all men. You don't need to kneel down. You don't need to stand up. You don't need to close your eyes. You don't need to kiss chicken for the pastor. Just say you accept Christ. That grace is yours. Do you know that grace that is general forgiveness? It says there are sins and iniquity I will remember no more. Bible says if you confess our sins, is Bible says what is kind. It's, Bible says you will forgive our sins and cleanse from all unrighteousness. It's general. Anything you do, if you raise up your hands in Jesus Christ, I repent. I'm sorry. He will forgive you right where you are. It's a general grace. Speaking in tongues is a general grace. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall speak with what? Tongues. It's a general grace. Speaking in tongues is not a special grace. If you are born again, it's your right to speak what? In, in tongues. It's a general grace. Do you know something? That prosperity, people think it's not a general grace. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says, we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's under grace too. That though he was rich, yeah, for our sake, he became poor. That truth, well, we might become rich. That that doesn't say that we'll be rich. It's that you might become. Prosperity is a special grace. 
You know why I said so? Because by the time now go to chapter 9. You know, go to chapter 9. He said that you might become rich. This is what he says. Is that you might become. Not that you'll be rich. He just is dead on the cross. Open the door for you to enter into that grace. But there's a sacrifice that one requires for you to see it. Brothers, don't be tired. Don't be tuned in. Don't tune off. That is why a lot of people confess, I am prosper. I prosper in Jesus' name. I am rising. My money coming. Money coming. Money hit me. Money hit me from every side. Money is hitting me. Money is running towards me. Money is not running away from me. I am a money magnet. Money comet. Money comet. And for the, this is the seventh year of money comet. Money is running. Money is running towards me. I, I attract money. Everywhere I go, I find money. In the gutter, I find money. Behind my boot, I find money. When I wake up, money drops down. Money is following me. Money, money everywhere. Money, dollar, pounds. I break your hood right now. Money, come! This is the 10th year. Nothing has come. Bills have been coming. Broke have been coming. But money has not come. Because what Christ's death did is that so that we might become not that we are. Are you hearing me? To them he gave power to become the son of God. Bible says, and now are we the son of God. That's a grace. It's a appear to everybody. For you to be, to be called a son of God is a general grace. You don't need to do anything special to become a son of God. What Christ has done has qualified you for that one. But to express riches, my, my brother, my, uh, it's a different thing. Go to 2 Corinthians. I need to rush very far. Go, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Chapter 9, I read from verse 6. Verse 6. It says, But this I say, Look at what it says now. He who sows what? Sparingly. We also reap what? Sparingly. And he who sows what? Bountifully. We also reap what? Bountifully. Verse 7. Go on, go on. So let each one give as a purposes in his heart. So all of you that read your Bible and say, God say, just give whatever you want to give as purpose in your heart. No. It's coming, from, it's coming from a thought. Are you hearing me? Please come, my brother. Come, two of you. Hallelujah. I don't want any lady to disturb what God is doing here. Why are you laughing now? Are you a lady? Let's go. But go, no, 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 don't be showing photo. We don't want photo. Just be showing scripture today. So let each one of you, let the Bible says, go back to verse 6. Go back to verse 6 so you understand what we are saying. But, but this I say, he who so sparingly, no, 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 it's because of your stature. Okay. Okay. Shall reap sparingly. It says, He who sows bountifully shall reap bountifully. Okay. It now says, So let each one, let each, whoever you are, each one. It's not a collective thing. It's about what? Each one. So let each one do what? Give as he purposes what in his heart. He has told you, if you give sparingly, you reap sparingly. If you give bountifully, you give bountifully. So now I'm throwing the, bo the ball is in your whole court. How do you want to reap? So like that. That's what he's simply telling you. He that so, 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 so let me give you a row. No, God lost, for God lost a cheerful giver. Anyone you want to do, do. The problem is available. Go back to your seat. And God, did you see that right now? That's that now. And God is what? Able to make what? All grace abound towards you, not towards the body. That you, that so bountifully, is able to make what? All grace abound towards you. That's a special kind of grace. That's the point I'm trying to make. It's not general grace now. It's a special kind of grace. Make this kind of grace abound towards you. That you have all what? All sufficiency what? In all. Only 1% of the people in the body of Christ. In fact, it's not up to 1% that are, are working this. Make the God to make all grace abound towards you. So that you have always, have your all sufficiency in all things. And have what? Abundance for every good work. 
Verse 9. Verse 9. So it is written, he dispasses abroad, he gives given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever, his generous endures forever. Verse 10. Now he will supply seed to the soil and bread to the, uh, to the for food, supply and multiply the seed we have sown and increase what? The fruit of your righteousness. All your ability to be generous. Glory be to God forevermore. So his death has made available to us that general grace to become rich. But it's your own seed that will activate it. Glory be to God forevermore. Write this down. When God wants to change the life of a man, when God wants to change the life of a man, he begins to call him to the realm of sacrifice. Please don't let your age stand between you and God tonight. Start early. When God wants to change the life of a man, he begins to pull him to the realm of sacrifice. And I want to relax tonight. I'm not asking anybody to give me any cobble. I'm only teaching you principles for life that will change your life. So please receive it for your own good and work in your own breakthrough. Christianity is a supernatural life. You, and you better live supernaturally. Glory be to God forevermore. Jesus got to a place where he was preaching by the sea. And he asked a man, Peter, he said, please, he stepped into his boat, his business place, and he asked him, begin to push me away from the crowd. A man who has not caught anything, who, who could get angry. He put a demand on him. Push me away. Sometimes God will be doing some things so you feel that God is taking you for granted. But God, Jesus had a, a harvest in his mind. After he has made him to wait, he made him to push, made him to do all the work, and I said, launch down, launch out for a catch. And that changes life. You know some of you, why God doesn't talk to you about, about, about sacrifice? Because your heart is totally anti-sacrifice. Your heart is totally anti-giving. You are into survival mode. So you always believe in God for favor, someone to give you. You don't know the best way to trigger favor for you to begin to give. Prayer for harvest is useless without seed. Write that down. I wish prayer alone would bring a harvest. Who prays for a harvest when there's no seed? Glory be to God forevermore. We are talking about wisdom for such a time as this. Any wisdom that secular can fail at this moment. I remember all the speculation. Anyway, I don't want to go into all that. You are, saying you are, you are living witnesses of all the failure of, 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 of earthly wisdom. They've told you, if you go to UK, this will happen. If you go to Canada, this will happen. I know I spoke to somebody from Canada today. I know the one I'm talking about. He said, Pastor T, I can't, I can't wait to finish so I can, I can come back. I said, I, I told him again, you know what? Since you didn't pray before you go, pray before you give before you come back. Go. Take your time to pray. <laughs> like I told them epignosis on Saturday. When I went, uh, epignosis. Uh, I said, you know, can I say I've stopped talking about uh, the location, the location? Because everything, don't he has boomerang, whether here or there. In fact, it, it's better for you to even stay in the air. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, Pastor T, what's your opinion? I don't have any opinion again. You just pray. Just go to where God wants to be. Before you go and just kill yourself for nothing. Every natural thing has paid. Somebody coming from the UK today. He was, he said, he, told, he was talking about some of his friends as people that would likely lose their homes. Because interest rate from Bank of England suddenly jumped to 5.4. His present rate was 1.4. He has jumped to 5.4. And you are on a mortgage of 300,000, so, 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 calculate it. So, you are used to pay about 1,003, 1,004 for your monthly mortgage. It now jumps to about 2,000. Where would the extra come from? Landlord will push the same thing to the tenants. They are squeezing everybody. Birmingham City just increased their, 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 their uh, what they call this, local government council tax by nearly 400 pounds per week, per month. Everybody's. A strata that is in the strata, white first, 
Asia's nest. Asia has the people from Singapore and Co. No bang ham. All those things. They now have blacks. Not our own kind of black, or Caribbean black. They now have our black. I'm not saying don't go. I'm just saying learn the wisdom of God. So that I can be well with you wherever you are. That is the point. Glory be to God forevermore. So when God wants to change your life, he begins to deal with you concerning sacrifice. The reason why some of you, God doesn't talk to you about, about sacrifice at all. Because your mind is against it. You, even when God calls attention to you, you will not hear. It's amazing. Honestly, it's amazing that whenever you are praying for breakthrough, God begins to talk to you about sacrifice. Praying to God for break, financial break, God begins to talk to you about seed. Glory be to God forevermore. So let me give you three definitions. Three definitions of sacrifice. Number one. It's number one definition. It's an unusual demand. Please mark my word. An unusual demand placed on an individual by God or by the Spirit of God. It's an unusual demand placed on an individual by God or by the Spirit of God to test their heart. To test their heart. And when they pass it, to test their heart. And when they pass it, an unusual blessings follow. That's number one definition. Right in front of it, Genesis chapter 20, 22, sorry, verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that the Lord tested Abraham. Genesis 20. Okay, you want me to repeat it? No. It will take about 30 seconds class. <laughs> Just write what you thought you understood. <laughs> eh? Yeah. Just write what you thought you heard. An unsure demand place on an individual by God or by the Spirit of God to test their heart. And when they pass that test, or you sh- and you shall bless it, also follow. Glory be to God forevermore. That is so you can even use arrow. Are you hearing me? God tests. Follow. Demand follow. That's all. Forward. You have finished just arrow. Arrow to arrow. That's all. God tests. Pass. Blessing. Aro, aro, aro. You, are, you finish? Please, let me beg you. When you keep failing all these tests, you'll be stranded for a long time. Mercy of God will feed you. The, father, the fatherhood of God will clothe you. But when it comes to real breakthrough, you will not enter. Glory be to God forevermore. Bible, that's verse 2. Go back there. Go, 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 to, go back to God. Thank you. You, you, copy, you got it very well. Bible said, now he came to pass. After this, that God what? Tested Abraham. I said to Abraham, Abraham, here I am. Verse 2. Verse two. He said, he, he, uh, then he said, take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains. Where you. That's an unusual demand. God has never demanded them to kill their son before. God said, you are going to do it. You have been celebrating this one. Bring him. Hallelujah. May God whisper to you about your car. Not to give me, but to sacrifice it. Don't, don't think I'm not here. Yeah. You cannot say amen. I know you. <laughs> God said, look at what God said. This is your son whom you love. God will not ask you to sacrifice what you don't love. If you give what you don't love, you know a sacrifice. Right now, God did not demand for Samuel. And I said by myself, I will do this. And for the, for Samuel that he gave, God gave her five children. Three boys, two girls. Do you get what I'm saying right now? 
That means it's not about me alone. God has also given you the initiative. Do you know something that Jesus said that blew me away? All of us, all, all of, all, all of us always thought that God forced Jesus to sacrifice himself. No. Book of John chapter 10 from verse 17. He said, nobody took my life from me. I lay it down by myself. I can lay it down and I can pick it up by myself. Wow. So it was a massive sacrifice he decided on his own to put down. For when there was a cry in heaven, who will go for us? Bible said the lamb. He came. He volunteered himself. He wasn't forced. Something you decide to do by yourself. And Bible said for that sacrifice, Bible says he humbled himself. He went to the death on the cross of Calvary. Bible said, therefore God has what? Highly exalted and given him what? A name. So that sacrifice he made brought tremendous blessing. Do you get what I'm saying right now? This is a sacrifice that God demands on you. Just decide, look, God, I'm ready for my next level. God, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And you say, look, this you will pay for it. This, this, this item. I don't know what item it is in your house. You are going to be the one that will pay for it. And may God allow only initiatives to, to, to enter your mind. Amen. I pray that this message gets into you. That only initiative that you, 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 where you are, you, you are just too tired of it. You want to break to the next level. You look for the next thing to sacrifice around you. You pick one and say, you will go for it. Have you read, when you get home, go and read, go and read one, somewhere in the book of Second Kings chapter 3. Bible talks about a king. Bible says a king, king of Moab. Bible says he was fighting a war, he tried his best. Nothing was working. Nothing was working. Then Bible says he took his first son. The hair are sacrificing. Bible said the war turned against the enemy. Is somebody hearing me right now? God didn't demand that. He, did, he used his own initiative. What do you need to do right now to change your story? I pray this is getting it right now. Because we cannot blame God. God has left in our hands. It's an unusual grace. It's not, it's not among the general grace. Glory be to God forevermore. So, so you wrote that. I think you are writing down what you are saying. Number, number three, divination. It's going to come on with that word again. An unusual seed. Number, number three, divination. It's an unusual seed demanded by the anointed. And it's always connected to your breakthrough. This one is demanded. Not by God, but by the anointed. Under the influence of the Spirit of God. It's an unusual seed demanded by the anointed. Write 1 Kings chapter 17 in front. Proverbs 9 to 16. I will read it later. But for now, write it for reference. You know what I'm saying? First Kings chapter 17, 9 to 16. Write it in front. I will explain it. I will read that and explain it later. What, did he, what happened there? There was famine in the land. A widow was about to die with her child. And then the man of God came, anointed man of God. He said, prepare for me first. Go and make for yourself. Give me water. That one when I brought water. He said, before you go, get to Greek water, bring me cake, small bread. That one said, I don't have. He said, no, I am anointed. Bring it. I am speaking to you by the Spirit of the Lord. Your cruise of what will not finish, one will not finish. Are you hearing me? Speaking by the It's a special demand by the anointed. And that place you read earlier on, uh, in the book of uh, 2 Kings chapter 4, that is part of the, and that, that's, that's part of the definition of, of, of number 2. Whereby an individual will just decide. It's not demanded. Bible said the woman, look, this is a man of God passing by us every day. You know what? He began to serve him food. Later, he now built a house for him. A penthouse for him. On top is, an, is, is what? That's what I call a sacrifice that individual seizes, initiative that brings breakthrough to their lives. Glory be to God forevermore. But this number three is the one demanded by the anointed. When an, even the anointed comes and says, look, I want you to do this, I want you to do that. that, that now, that doesn't make, look, please, let me, the most divine who is anointed to you 
Uh, not that you go on the street. Somebody will see you say market. I say you must hear. Uh, I say you are, you, are, you are a stupid person. No? Not that somebody will just miss you on the street in front of NPC Towers. I say, my brother, I, 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 you fall for it. You, you have just lost your money. Yeah, yeah. In fact, this one is more than one chance. You have only three chances. <laughs> because you are stupid. Glory be to God forevermore. Amen. Don't forget, Bible says, test every spirit. Amen. Test every spirit. Amen. Don't let anybody play on your fear. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God forevermore. Amen. I remember when we were doing our church building. I challenged everybody. I said, I don't care who we're going to show. From pledge one million naira. People pledge one million. A, a lot of who share testimony with me say, Pastor T, I, when I played that money, I didn't have one cobble. Say, but the way the money came, the way this worked, everybody, almost everybody, share testimony with me. Glory be to God forever, man. And some are still harvesting it today. Hallelujah. Time is going. It's gone. But let me, I hope you are getting something here right now. Gather my sins to me. Who have made sacrifice with me. Who have made what? Covenant with me what? By sacrifice. Glory be to God forevermore. Right? There are five types of sacrifice you can make. Five. I will not... This is very nice, like my, it's my, like my lecture hall. I've been telling you things, like, you know, not preaching, just talking. Hallelujah. Number one. I won't explain them because it's, it will take our time. It will not allow me to get to where I'm going. And time is gone. So I will just mention it, fra, fra, fra. Hallelujah. Number one sacrifice you can make, you can make is bodily sacrifice. Bodily sacrifice. Body, this body, human body, that's pigeon English. Bodily sacrifice. Bracket in front of that, Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you there for brethren. Are you what? Read it. Read where is it? Romans 12, 1. Who is on the console? Be hearing me and be showing. Mondo be showing me. I'm more interested in scriptures. Uh, I beseech you there for brethren. By the means of God, are you what? You present what? Your body's what? A living sacrifice. Holy word and acceptable to God. Which is the word? Your reasonable word, service. Present your body as a living sacrifice. It's a body, number one, one is bodily sacrifice. Whereby you don't decide. Until I marry, I will not sleep with any man. Be looking at me, I'm not looking at you. All of you, these crazy people, you have to just decide to follow God. A pastor will be talking, you'll be look, think, looking at him as if he's talking something strange from, from hell. What's wrong with you? Anyway, yeah, let me just. It's true now, we'll be talking what is standard scriptures. You'll be looking at him as if this is strange. Where, where did this man come from? Are you supposed to be sleeping with somebody? Do you need a pastor to come and say it? Hallelujah. It's true now. What is normal in those days has become so abnormal now and what is everybody job looking at pastors as if these people are very crazy. Hallelujah. Amen. It's kind of sacrifice. Look, oh, I will not taste another bottle of beer again. Do my body wants it, I will not. I will deny the body. It's a bodily sacrifice. Hallelujah. Amen. I like hot gin. You don't know that song. It's a praise worship song. <laughs> he said, Me, body, because of my commitment to God, this man will not taste another gene. Hallelujah. <laughs> you did your body as what? A living sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. 
Because the body wants to do it. But you say, no, you are not going to do it. It's a sacrifice. Hallelujah. You yourself as a what? A living sacrifice. That's number one. Body, body sacrifice. Number two is what I call prayer sacrifice. Let me tell you something about prayer. If you have been praying for the last 40 years, are you hearing me? Tomorrow morning will be still be a struggle. <laughs> if you have been praying for 40 years, tomorrow morning will still be a struggle. Sometimes you will wake up, you just be doing eshebe, eshebe. Are you hearing me? There is no wake up that is pleasant. I've never said what I woke up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are all. No, you wake up gradually. <laughs> Hallelujah. It takes an unusual move of the spirit of a revival breaking out in your life for prayer to become pleasant. But that does not last forever because that will wear out your body. That doesn't last forever. Glory be to God forevermore. Psalm 141, I can't remember. Verse 2. Also, Psalm 140, verse 2. I don't know. Well, just check. Let me know that is there. Look, this man that's saying pictures. Look, you are wasting my time. Let me just go back. Next, number 3. Look at what it says. Verse 141, verse 2. Have you seen it? It says, Let my prayer. Be what said before you as what? As incense. The lifting of my hand what? As what? As evening sacrifice. So that's number two pray, Number two sacrifice. Prayer. Hallelujah. Number three sacrifice. Praise. Praise sacrifice. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 15. Hebrews 13 15. Who is there? Therefore, let us continually what? Offer what? Sacrifice what? Of praise. Glory be to God forevermore. Yeah. Praise is a sacrifice. Don't avoid it. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's number four, Abby. Yes. Number three. Anybody reach number four since that time? <laughs> okay. Number four. Number four, sacrifice. Sacrifice of good works. Good works. All of you serving in the house of God is a sacrifice. From children, church, to car park, to ushering, to choir, to all those things is a good sacrifice. Those of you that allow people to squat with you is a sacrifice of good works. You could have done something with your space, but you have someone to come and stay in your space. You feed them, it's a good sacrifice. All of you that help other people to pay school fees, to pay, to pay rent, that, that clothe people, that help people, don't help people during their wedding, is a big sacrifice. God will reward your labor of love in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Those who will say, look, my, my friend, you got a new house? Ah, so I couldn't help you with, my, with, with your rent. I don't have money, but where you are parking, call me, I will help you to park. It's a good work. Hebrews chapter 13. The same place we read just now. Go to verse 16 there. Verse 16. Verse 16. Next verse. But do not forget what? To do what? Good. Are you seeing it? Do not forget to do work and to share. What? what look at next time. For with what? Such sacrifices. God is well pleased. Bible calls doing good and sharing sacrifices. That's number four, right? What is number five now? I have not said it. <laughs> Number five is financial sacrifice. The one you hate. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God forevermore. You know, Paul was talking to the Philippians that you gave me, you sent money to me again and again and again and again. Look at what he said in verse 18. Chapter 4, verse 18. Philippians chapter 4, verse 18. Look at what he called their giving. Financial sacrifice. Look at what he called it. Philippians chapter 4, verse 18. Indeed, I have, I, have, I have all and abound. I am full. Having received from Epaphroditus the things you sent from, uh, the things sent from you, a sweet smelling aroma. What? An acceptable sacrifice. Well pleasing to God. He said, What you sent is an acceptable what? Sacrifice. I've given you what? Five types of sacrifice. Glory be to God forevermore. Amen. Let me now begin to touch down. 
if I have a move of the Spirit of God, I will come back to this next week. Hallelujah. Amen. Make sacrifice. Call your husband and wife. I say, what can we go to sacrifice in this house to move this house forward? Call your business partner. What are we going to place before the altar to move this business forward? What are we, what do we, what's our winning edge? What do we need to do to be ahead of others? There is nobody who should get married without sacrificing before they get married. For our home that is coming, we are going to place a seed on the altar. Or a seed I'll be speaking when we marry for in the future. When you give back to a child, that's why when people bring children to the, to the altar. Because we don't talk about it, doesn't mean you should not do it. Nobody should dedicate a child without sacrificing. Because that sacrifice will speak in the, speak in the life of that child in the future. You are saying, this child, as I bring you to God, I am planting this seed on your behalf. That even when I am no longer here, this seed will speak on your behalf. Because seed don't die. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You have said the cost of their life by the seed you sowed on their behalf. These people who just come to the people of God, hey, 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 they go back and they will do five naira. We are crazy. Ooh, 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 ooh. You understand know what I'm talking about right now? You don't know what you are doing. Look, if you are smart, once you buy a car, a new car, sow the seed for the next car. If for, just do for money, put it down. But when you are trying to manage a car and stay on it, you will be on that car for a long time. Because inside every fruit is a seed that will produce another fruit. So when you see a harvest, there's a seed inside that harvest that you must sow so that the, the cycle continues. Is somebody hearing me right now? In your next contract that you win, sow a seed out of it. Sacrifice out of it. It's a seed for the next contract. So you don't eat one and die. See the way it's quiet right now. I believe it's sinking in. Because some of you behave like little children. They will go and meet daddy. Daddy, give me sweet. Give me sweet. You give them that sweet. You say, give me part. They do like this. They, don't, they forgot that the sweet flows from the dad. Finish your sweet. That means you come back. Why don't you open that channel up? Wow. Gather my sins to me. Gather them to me. Who have made what? Covenant with me by what? By sacrifice. Not by fasting. By sacrifice. May you not just be a hearer. May you be a doer. You know, preachers are projected by study, that when people talk about sacrifice generally, it, it says about 2 to 5% of people get it. People will nod, but only few will do. But you have had the testimony of all the, almost of all the men of God that nothing ever happened without them sacrificing. How they pack all, how they empty all their account, how they did this, how they did that. If you think God is, 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 has favorite, God has no favorite. The same God is good or rich unto all that call upon Him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. In fact, if you are going to walk this path, it gets to a point that you won't want to pray again to ask God for anything. Because when you mention anything to God, you just point to something to do. You pray again, you say, do this. You just stop praying. I don't want to hear another instruction. But these sacrifices will speak for you in the future. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me close for today. Not because I finished, but for today. Hallelujah. Amen. First Kings 17. I told you I will read it later. First Kings 17. I will just read, rush through it. I will just read it briefly. I won't go into details. Look at what it says here. This is, there was serious famine in the land, right? And uh, the prophet had been feeding by brook Sherid, but the brook dried up. And God said, go to Zarephath. So he said, arise, go to Zarephath, which belonged to Sidon, 
and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to what? To provide for you. May you be the commanded one. I commanded her. May you be a man operating under a command. I, do you know what is something that, that I always tell people? There is no need in any church that God has not provided somebody in that church to be that need. But the question that, is somebody there that will hear that command? That's the problem. We have, we have, have single Amadi seminar this, week, this month. Can somebody walk up to the pastor and say, look, throughout that period, I want to provide drink for the pastor. We have a grace and true seminar coming. So can somebody walk up to the pastor and say, look, I am, the accommodation of the guest minister is on me. Can somebody walk and say, look, the feeding of the guest minister is on me. Can somebody walk up to the pastor and say, look, the b-balls are on me. Glory be to God forevermore. Can somebody walk up to the pastor and say, Pastor, how much does it cost to pay for this? Averagely, how much is the, a, a meeting? How much does a meeting cost? I say, okay, you know what? This month, this April is on me. April is on me. Pastor, how much are your children's school fees? Say, so, look, the next time, or the next session is on me. Is somebody hearing me? Sacrifice. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Arise. Go to look at, look at it. Don't tell me you are broke. We are not broke. He said, I have commanded what? A widow there to buy for you. Her husband is dead. Women are supposed to work. She has a son. She was broke. There was family. And I said, but she's the one I commanded. God doesn't look at your, command, at your situation before he commands you. It's only we pastors and so and social media that you are not considering the people. You know, you are just placing a demand on the people. Look at God, they place a demand on a widow. Because the wisdom of God or the foolishness of God is better than the wisdom of men. When you say God is foolish, the wisest of men cannot be compared to it. Tell your neighbor, tell your tell them, tell them what we have. Say if when you are ready, God is always ready. You hear me? When you are there, all this one day, when you are doing, try to permute, permute it, how 5,000 will take to the end of the month. Continue. Are you hearing me? When you are ready, God is ready. Yes, when you are ready to lose it all, you will see God work on your behalf. Hallelujah. 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 I commanded the widow there to, I commanded the widow there to what? To provide for you. I will continue for your here next week. But this, there's something I just want to leave with you today. God has anointed you and ordained you to be a provider. Say amen to that. Amen. And that call, that ordination, that, 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 that anointing has no, no regard for your background. Because God could have poured out bread for the widow. God could have done miracles for the widow. God said, no, the way I want this widow can only break through is by making her what? A provider. Write this down as we finish today. Provisions are available only to providers. If you are not a provider, what do you want provision for? Because water flows only through channels. Water don't go through damned places. Is somebody hearing me? Yes, so, so don't, don't, don't say that I'm, I'm, I'm a widow. I'm a widow. No, 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 no. That has no relevance as far as everyone's concerned. I'm, doing, I'm not employed. Ah, you are making yourself poorer. I commanded a widow there to what? To provide. So there's an anointing on your life. It's an anointing of a provider. Amen. And I pray for you that because of you, may people feed. Amen. Because of you, may many go to school. Amen. 
Because of you, may many be clothed. Amen. Because of you, may many have accommodation. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because of you, may many be treated in the hospital. Amen. May many bees be sorted out because of you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Because of you, may people have relief. Amen. May medical bees be taken care of. Amen. Because of you. In the name of Jesus. May children be blessed because of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. May widows in your community be taken care of. Hey, may the blind, may people around you feel a difference. Because of you in the name of Jesus Christ. I sense resources of heaven moving. I sense seriously my spirit. Resources from heaven moving. Because God does not give assignment without empowerment. If he says, I have provided, I made this Buddha to be a provider, God will empower her to be a provider. I declare by your life, may the empowerment of heaven, may dan so kelia basi, poche katalabre de so kelia, be din de se kadalabrando so fede barashte. Le kati se kalimbro do so kodi abadashta. Me gina manas to tuli bredekesh te kala brada so keli abaraite. Me inda labaka so frodo bushta kali brada kase tale brodo storia. Den di se kenda lambro do sto koskeri abadesh te keri abakanda lia. Be reke suta limbra da kastote baranda labake da bushteri ade. Ba kaliboro so kenda lambre de sto kole bakase tele bredesh to. Me inda libo sto kala brada so carry Allah. May there be a download, a downpour of resources of heaven over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. When you are given an option to eat or to sow, choose to sow. When you have option before you, should I eat this or should I sow it? Sow it. Glory be to God forevermore. For God ministers seed. Are you hearing me? To the sower and bread to the eater. He said, but there's a difference. God multiplied the seed so. He doesn't multiply the bread eating. I can tell you stories and stories and stories, but I don't feel like sharing the Bible with you today. Because man, your greatest hour of temptation is your greatest hour of need. You will be so in so need that you will, and that's the time that test will come. So you are caught in between. The Bible says those who yield to their flesh will experience death. Glory be to God forevermore. We are talking about general wisdom for such a time as this. Covenant. Gather my sins to me. Who have made covenant to me? We walk by sacrifice. Hallelujah. Let your organization sacrifice. Let your hope sacrifice. Let you as an individual also what? Sacrifice. Sacrifice. We see God move you forward. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. May you enjoy the mercy of God early in life. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's why you see a lot of pastors who have revelation of what knowledge of the word of God. But they are poor. Powerful people. But they are poor. Because Prosperity is not a function of anointing. It's a function of sacrifice. Thank you. It's a function of sacrifice. That's why you got somebody who's hardworking and yet has nothing to show for it. That's why somebody with brilliant ideas who will have natural results. Yet he carries the Holy Ghost inside. But he has not done anything to enhance that Holy Spirit. Glory be to God forevermore. And so I commend you to God. And to the word of his grace. Which is able to build you up. 
and give her inheritance among those who are sanctified in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for you. You beat this economy. Amen. You beat this economy Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hear me. As the prices rise, so your income will also rise. May the Lord refuel you. Amen. May you see the supernatural hand of God. Amen. In the name of Jesus. You will not be a reflection of what you earn. Amen. You will not be a reflection of where you walk. Amen. There will be something about you that's different. Amen. Supernatural supply. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know even as a church. As a church. You cannot afford those no sacrifice. A church that doesn't give. That church will be poor. I'm not talking about individuals. That I say church. That, ah, you can't afford it. You can't afford not to give. You can't afford it. Glory be to God forevermore. Amen. Just the way any organization, you can't afford not to do. Don't, don't, don't even risk it. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We honor your holy name. Thank you for moving us forward. Thank you for moving us forward. Thank you for moving us forward. May this word find expression in the life of your people. And may the harvest be plenteous in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Are you blessed tonight? Let's celebrate God forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I have a leading of the Spirit, I will do part two of this next week. Glory be to God forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. They said they wanted to feed 5,000. I thought maybe it was more than fed millions in the wilderness. Why did the command bread to just come? Because if he did that, it would have, have darkened the principle. For the people of God. That's why he didn't do it once, he did it twice. What do you have? Next time, what do you have? To prove that, that in matter of 20 witnesses, every word is established. This principle of using little to, but to feed much is a constant principle. But a seed is required in order for you to do it. He did it twice to establish that principle. Glory be to God forever. Other miracles happened. But when it came to miracle of provision, something is always required. They wanted wine, go and fetch water. It's always required. Glory be to God forever, man. He said, ah, they was going to make fish for them, right? The Bible said they were already fishing. When they brought their own fish, they said, no, I'm, I'm a step better. My own is already cooked. Your own is raw. So it was once as if he did something that he wouldn't prove. No, it's always just ahead. Man will do his own day, he will not do his own super. On top of it, that's what always happens. When it comes to provision, something is always required. Always. That's the New Testament standard. Glory be to God forever. Yeah. God bless and keep you. Cause the faith to shine upon you. Amen. Once again, thank you for having me. I'll see you next Tuesday. Right? Hallelujah. We want to invite every one of you upper Friday, Friday the 22nd. We have Grace and Truth Seminar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We call it the gospel. The gospel. And we are bringing Richard Ras on Bilu. Hallelujah. So, Friday, all your leaders come with, Pastor, you not come with all your leaders on Friday for leadership meeting. But on Saturday morning, 9 a.m., Everybody, let's all come and hear what is the meaning of the gospel. Why is it that so much? Why is it that Christians don't rest? I thought he said, if it is gospel, say, Come on to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you what? Rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of even my, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Why is it that our Christianity is hard? Because we are not receiving the gospel. That's why you don't sleep.
That's why they told you 12 o'clock is when God answers prayer. Your God that sleeps. My own God doesn't sleep. Anytime I call on him, he will answer me. That's why you fast until you have ulcer. Because you don't understand the gospel. That's why any little thing where you are going, you are going out, you, you, you hit your left leg. Ah, it will be a bad day. Which, are you crazy? Left leg means a bad day. When Bible said the step of a good man, they are ordered of the Lord. Because you don't understand the gospel. When you say because you know something is happening to you, my, my sisters are not married. Hey, I am not married. Hey, my, 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 in our family, four people are married, three are divorced, only means left. There is a demon of divorce in our family. You are crazy. Because if you understand the gospel, you will understand we have been delivered from the power of darkness. We have been translated to the kingdom of his dear son. You will understand that. For he who the son has set free is free indeed. You will understand that in the gospel. That's why when the man threatens you, you, just, you, you ease and pass. You don't go for prayer. You just ease and pass. Because the greater one lives here. That means you, now you are understanding the gospel. That's why you will say nothing will separate us from the love of God. Nothing. That's when you will understand the stupidity of somebody saying that a Christian will go to hell. How can a Christian go to hell? Why don't you continue your beard then? Why did you run to him for refuge? Glory be to God forevermore. Hallelujah. It's lack of understanding of the gospel. Because people confuse entrance, entrance into heaven and reward. They confuse it. It's a different thing. Entrance into heaven is guaranteed by the door. Jesus is the door. Reward is a different thing. For he shall reward every man according to their works. Work is not the license for entrance. Work is a basis for reward, not for entrance. Because people don't understand this gospel. So they make this case anything tight and hard. By the way, God doesn't answer prayers because you fasted. God answers prayer because you believe. So whatever thing you desire, where you pray, believe! And you shall have them. Training your spirit is different from training God. You cannot train God. <laughs> Fasting trains your spirit. It doesn't train God. Come and understand the gospel. So that when you are talking, you have the basis for answering those who question your faith. That's why somebody will say, no, we all have the same God. We are crazy. <laughs> you don't understand the gospel. So by the grace of God, next week Saturday, not this Saturday, next week Saturday, 23rd, and Sunday morning, 24th, we'll be having Bishop Ransom Bello. <laughs> Hallelujah. 9 a.m. And to bless us that weekend is also K-Strings. K Hallelujah. So please make it a date. We're going to have a great time. Hallelujah. Amen. So I finished all my announcements. It's nearly, it's okay, 17 minutes to 8. So I can talk for the next 17 minutes. He'll be close at 8. No, let me close. Let's package our offering. Let's package our offering. It's my honor to take the offering tonight. Hallelujah. If you want to give physically, let the ushers give you the envelopes. If you want to do a transfer, the accounts are on the screen. Please show the accounts on the screen. Hallelujah for the Lord our God, the Almighty. Hallelujah, he reigns. Hallelujah for the Lord our God, the Almighty. Hallelujah, he reigns.
We want to thank you tonight. We praise you. We honor you. For indeed you reign. I thank you for my brothers and my sisters who have come here tonight. Who have come to honor you with their ties. And we thank you Lord because your word is true. And the devourers will be for their sakes. Thank you because they are so blessed that all men see them and call them blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you and I honor your holy name Lord. For the supply of your spirit tonight. And we thank you for everything you've given to us to sow. We sow with gladness of heart. And we thank you because your grace comes of everything we sow. It's multiplied to us severally. Let your name alone be glorified. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you all the praise, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. Hallelujah. You can do better than that if you're blessed tonight. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. One more time, please help me celebrate our Father and Lord Papa T. Amen. The house. That was an awesome, awesome message. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Some of you have never preached before. I said celebrate the man of God. You are still, you are still doing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you so much for being a blessing every time, every time. Sunday, 7 a.m. or 9 a.m., 10 a.m. or here in Zoe Arena, every time. Thank you for being a blessing, every time. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, you may be seated as we make feast to close tonight. Hallelujah. Welcome to Gracie Christian Center, Zoe Arena. This is where favor overcomes labor. Grace supersedes sweat and mercy triumphs over judgment. Hallelujah. The year 2024 has been declared as our year of great light. Glory to God. How many of you are still in the year 2024? And how many of you are still celebrating the great light? Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. All right, quickly, I just want to quickly uh, announce or re-announce that we're going to be here next week, Tuesday, for an awesome time. I call it Super Tuesdays with Papa T. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So... It's not, if you are coming when, when I am preaching, it is Tuesday's midweek service. 
where we have where we have him, he has his t- super Tuesdays. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But how many of you have been totally blessed? Honestly speaking, no hype, amen. How many of you have been blessed coming? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, when Pastor was teaching last week and you started doing illustration, someone I say, eh, I know where Pastor Inoko used to do illustration. Yeah. So, so I mean, I can't be doing, I can't be throwing bomb when my pastor is teaching illustrations. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Um, we began our singles and marriage seminar last week, Sunday. Amen. <laughs> And, and it, was, it was a very, very awesome, awesome time we had, amen. Uh, yeah, some people, some people went back. They were dragging the suya with me, amen. Uh, but first, when you're talking about body exercise, I, I illustrated with suya and fresh meat. Everybody want, was pressing the suya. I know suya, when, when you were going to buy suya, they say, give me for testing first. So I was asking them, are you for testing or you are for marriage? Amen. <laughs> no, it's God. The one they test, they live on the street, but the one you buy, you take it home. And that one has much more potential. You can cook a goosey, you can cook stew, you can cook, you know, amen. And that one, plenty of people have touched it. Touch, 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 touch. Glory to God. It says, it says, something material. Glory to God. That's what the Bible says the marriage is honorable. Honorable with the bed undefiled. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Some of you are not saying amen. I said, Hallelujah. The grace of God does not, is not, doesn't, is not teaching you to, to say yes to sin. The grace of God has appeared. is teaching us to say no to sin. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the grace below. I said hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So it continues this Sunday, um, which is going to be the 17th. Glory to God. And we're going to be having a couple going to share lifetime experience with us. And we are totally expectant of a great time in God's presence. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it's going to conclude on the 24th. Glory to God. Invite someone and make it a date with us. We are totally expectant and we are totally sure that God is going to do you good. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I, I, we are trying to teach singles and marriage so that my counseling sessions will be reduced. Amen. So, glory to God. So, yeah, so we're going to be having the Mr. and Mrs. Oyenuga in the house. Glory to God. Help me celebrate them right in future, man. All right, so workers, please, um, this Saturday, which is going to be the 16th, we're going to have our evangelism, um, 9 a.m. So, please, make, make, make plans to be here. Glory to God. People don't just come to church. We go out there to invite them. Yeah. Are you with me? So let's make, if you're a worker in the house, please make, make out time. And then if you, if, you're, if you have time and you want to just do the work of God, it's part of the sacrifice, please come around. And then within one hour, one hour, 13 minutes, we'll be out of, we'll be done with that. Glory to God. Like Pastor just announced, announced um, the fourth thing on my list here is we're having a special seminar um, at the headquarter church t- tagged the gospel. Amen. And it's going to start on the Friday the 15th, all right, through Saturday 9 a.m. And then for those of you who go to church over there, you'll be there on Sunday. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that I don't come to church on Sunday, I don't see my members. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I have to separate the announcement at this point. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Friday, Saturday. Glory to God. Yeah, so but Sunday. Hallelujah. Give unto Caesar what belongs unto Caesar. And give unto God what belongs to God. I, didn't, I mean, I did <laughs> I mean, <laughs> glory to God. But truly, truly, I totally believe that, like Pastor have just given us a teaser, it's going to be a time in God's presence that will be a blessing to you. Trust me, there are certain things that are foundational truths that you can never outgrow. It doesn't matter how long you've heard them. I totally believe that every time you hear them, you are reinforcing your faith and your knowledge in those things. Glory to God. Come on, I said glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right, so um, tonight I, I am seeing, I'm seeing a lot of faces also from the headquarters church. I can, see, I can see somebody from the Eagle team. Amen. Help me celebrate them. Amen. 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 Help me celebrate. I can, also, I can also see people from the care team here tonight. Amen. Help me celebrate them. Hallelujah. I can see people from Cloud Team also in the house. Let me celebrate them. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. Um, not, not for the first time. They were here last week. I can see people from the ushering department. Please let me celebrate them. 
Amen. Amen. I'm trying my best so that somebody will not meet me later. I say, sir, you did not call my team. We also have King Solomon team in the house. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Let me say, the way those MCs used to say it um, during events, to say, if I don't call your name, it's not because you're not important, but God knows your name. Amen. Hallelujah. And we celebrate. So, amen. Please celebrate everybody here who have called. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. All right, please, let's, let's just make fix to close. Can you be on your feet as we close tonight? When we come next week, I'm going to welcome first time as amen. It gets why. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many of you are totally blessed coming tonight? I want to invite you next week, Tuesday. And we really trust God that as we release our faith in these confessions, remember, we have the fatherhood of God backing these words. Hallelujah. And we trust God for manifestations in our lives in the name of Jesus. I dwell. I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I say of the Lord, you are my refuge and my fortress. My God in you I trust. Surely you deliver me from the snare of the fowler, take it slowly, and from the perilous pestilence. You cover me with your feathers, and under your wings I take refuge. Your truth is my shield and buckler. I am not afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come near me. Only with my eyes shall I look and see the reward of the wicked, because I have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, my dwelling place. No evil shall befall me, nor shall any plague come near my dwelling. For you have given your angels charge over me. To keep me in all my ways. In their hands they bear me up. Lest I dash my foot against a stone. I tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent I trample underfoot. Because I have set my love upon you. Therefore you deliver me. And you set me on high. Because I have known your name. I call upon you. And you answer me. You are with me in trouble. You deliver me and you honor me. With long life, you satisfy me and show me your salvation. In Jesus' name. Amen. And we'll say, God has made all grace and earthly favor abound towards us. Therefore, we have all sufficiency in all things and excess for every good work. And we declare, there is a mighty supply for us now. We have rest, restoration, and supernatural experiences on every side. Our incomes multiply. We enjoy his increase, divine difference, multiple celebrations, the rain. And this is our year of great lights. May God bless you. Have a great week ahead. Hallelujah.